something clear about money getting rich is probably the worst thing that can happen to the majority of men most men are not ready for money and i say this because i was broke for a very long time lived a very difficult life and then became rich that's why i am because money amplifies so if you're the man first and then you get rich yeah, you're absolutely. the man yeah if yes. you're a punk and then you get rich now you're Fuck. a massive punk. It happens with crypto kids, right? I had one kid come to me, some 20-year-old kid who made $86 million. Jeez. Damn. And he came to me and he was like, Tay, I need your help that I have 86 million, blah, 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 my life's still shit. It's like, yeah, because now you're just a sugar daddy to a bunch of hoes who don't give a fuck about you. And your life's over now. You should have been the man first. You could have been a big G first. You can't even fucking pull a firearm. Like, what are you doing? So I was offered a fight last minute. I've been retired for four years. I only train for fun. I don't train competitively. I smoke cigars. I drink vodka. I'm not living a fighter's life at all. And when I was offered that fight, I was scared. I was, I was nervous and I was like, I haven't trained. I don't know if I should do it. Da, da, da. And I sat there for an hour and I thought, I always viewed myself as a man who's never afraid of, of physical confrontation. Mm. And once I realized I was afraid, it really bothered me. I was like, so that's who I am now. I really didn't like that when I read that text message, the first thing I felt was nerves. I didn't like that at all. So for that reason, I had to say yes. Yeah. Now I have to fight. I don't want to live as a man who believes he was afraid. So I had to say yes. So I went and whooped his ass. Andrew Tate gets knocked out. Hi, Woofies. You coming or not? Yeah? You waiting then or what? No. Woofies stay together. If you're not coming, then go to the hotel and we'll meet you in a bit. Everyone always asks about best advice you've ever received, right? Yeah. What's the worst advice anyone's ever given you? <sighs> That's a good question. I've seen a lot of bad advice on the internet. What's the worst advice anyone's ever given me personally? I never really listened to anybody, so so it's hard for me to talk about advice because I never listened to it. The traditional the traditional path to wealth is terrible advice. To go to university, get a degree, get a job, blah blah blah. That's terrible advice. We already know that. We talked about that. I think follow your passion is also a ter terrible piece of advice. Yeah, yeah. The, people say, "Hey, man, you need to find your what you're passionate about and do that." And what they're trying to say is only do what you like, because you have no motivation to do anything else. And motivation in, in and of itself is a scam. I don't believe in motivation. I believe in discipline. I am not motivated to do the things I'm supposed to do every day. I don't wake up full of like joy that I have to go to the gym or that I have to work or got to deal with crap. I don't feel motivated to do them. I'm disciplined. I do them regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm in the mood to do it or I'm not in the mood to do it, it gets done. That's discipline. Discipline's a real thing. Motivation is fleeting. Yeah. You're never going to be permanently motivated. So when someone comes along and says, oh, do what you're passionate about, what they're saying is you'll have endless motivation and then you'll be able to try hard. If you're the kind of person who can only try hard at something he enjoys, then you're going to fail because most things you enjoy don't pay any money. If they paid money, you wouldn't enjoy them. I do want to know when you when you take a piss, do you put your dick over your waistband or do you put it through your fly? That's somebody. That's something I ask everybody. I put it over my waistband. God damn it! All right, that makes me the bitch on that one. Woman can't drive was one of them. Yeah, that, that was kind of weird. So you don't think that men are overall better drivers than women? No. So when you see the worst parking you've ever seen in your life, you don't think it's more likely to be a female. Yo, it's just as equally yo, likely to be a man. He in is your view. crazy, bro. When, I mean, when I see it, when I see, uh, oh yeah, exa yeah, exa yeah, exactly, exactly what you just said. Yes. Then that's your opinion. What's the argument? You know, like, like I said, it's not. It doesn't have to be an opinion, right? That's Liz, your anecdotal evidence, which is like kind of a bias, right? When, when you want to bring out things like, 
Woman can't drive. You're going to go with stats and your stats are off. You're, they're, they're, you're just wrong about them. Well, oh, everyone is firstly, firstly, when you talk about biases, absolutely everybody is biased to their own personal experiences, right? If I've been in five car crashes and all five of them were driven by women by coincidence, I'm going to be biased. Are you actually fat and lazy? Can I show you my hey, stomach? Hold on. Hold on. Am I fat? How old are you? 21. Bro, 21, you should be strong as an ox. At 21, I could split the earth's core with my bare hands. Fucking, you're 21 years old, you have unlimited energy. You should have a six pack on fucking accident at 21. At 21, yes, you are, you are fat. You're out of shape for a 21 year old. Doing any push ups? Jesus. How do I e slap? Tate on the worst quality men can have. One of the least attractive qualities you can show as a, as a man hmm. is frugality. Yes, but now, true. I'm not, it's not saying you're not smart with your money, not saying you don't invest. There's a difference. But there's a difference. But That's if you come across as frugal or cheap, that is super unattractive. And it's not unattractive because the women are gold diggers. It's unattractive because it shows you have a scarcity mindset. Yes. I'm scared. I'm a little punk. I'm afraid if I spend this extra $3, then <laughs> you're just advertising you're, you're a punk. You're saying I am a punk. I'm scared. That's the worst thing you can do is come across as frugal. I'm not saying you have to blow all your money on every date, right? Yeah. You can go on a normal date, da, da, da. but if you come yeah. across as frugal or cheap, if you tip shit or you're just cheap, th th that's the number one turnoff for women is a cheap dude. Nobody wants a cheap dude. I don't even want cheap friends, yeah, right? right? You know? So like you're saying, if you're a woman, you have all these choices. Why are you gonna be rolling with some cheap yeah. dude? You're like, what, he's cheap on the first date? I'm gonna be with him for the rest of my life, Mr. Cheap? Yeah. Come on, you gotta get that out of the window. He... The second thing, that I don't really like about being rich. Food used to be a big deal. So my brother and I, we've always lived together. And when we were broke and we were training for world title fights, so we were world level athletes with no money. We invented a dish that was so bland, we called it flavor because it was the only way you could add flavor to the dish. So it had the name flavor, but it was extremely bland. And it was white rice, frozen peas, because they're cheap, kidney beans. Kidney beans have more protein per 100 gram, grams than minced beef. Did you know that? I found out when I was broke, walking the aisles of the grocery store, trying to find the cheapest protein money can buy. Couldn't bring myself to be a vegetarian, so I'd add a little bit of meat, minced beef. And if I was really rich, I'd have hot sauce. But that was like 2 or $3 dollars without adding nutritional sustenance. It was just purely for taste. And I couldn't often afford that. Literally, you have no idea how broke I was when I was fighting. Kickboxing does not pay. So for a good three year period of my life, I lived on this flavor. We'd cook it twice a week, cook on a Sunday and on a Wednesday. And we'd make these big pots of rice, green uh, peas, kidney beans, and a bit of minced beef. beef. That was it. And every once in a while, if I, my friends came over and they had more money than me, or if I went to a fight show and I was getting a paid dinner, or if I was out with you know, my uncle who had money and they'd buy me a steak, whoo! You ever had a steak for the first time in three months after eating nothing but flavor? You don't understand the level of happiness, food was amazing when I was poor. What's food now? All I do is eat steaks. I walk into the restaurant and say, give me your most expensive steak. And you know what's most annoying about that? I say that and they start talking about options. Okay, well we have the tomahawk or the ribeye. I asked for your most expensive. It's in numbers. Which number is higher? Oh, the tomahawk. Then why are you fucking talking about a ribeye? You dumb bitch. Of course, I don't say it like that. I say, ha, 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 I'll take the tomahawk, please, because I'm a polite man. I'll take the most expensive steak. I don't care. I don't care what cut of beef it is. It's a cow. They cut the cow this way. They cut the cow that way. I don't give a shit. I walk in the restaurant. Give me your most expensive steak. Tristan also. Give me the most expensive steak. Okay, yeah, what sides do you like? All of them. Oh, all, all of them? Yeah, give, give me all the sides. We sit there with two fucking $400 steaks. We have a bite of each side, a little bit of macaroni and cheese, a bit of mashed potato, a bit of green beans, bit of one fry. Leave them basically all uneaten. And we walk off with our $1,000 lunch. And we don't even really appreciate it. And that's all we do.
every day. Whose car Damn, is it? Problem solved. Yours. I mean, it's mine. I've got the V5 in here. I haven't filled it out yet, but... How much was it? Less than the 10 grand that your wheels would have cost. Money saved. No. Take it back. No. Legit. This is... Yeah, I can't take it back. I, what do you think? I bought it from the dealership? Second hand. I'm gonna go there. He's gonna tell me to get lost. He's got my money now. Your money. Romania, here we come. Well played. Yeah. Good. Well played. That's brilliant. It's not brilliant. Weather's that bad. And I... The I... Aston can stop. In a nice, safe you parking place. leave 150 grand for the car by the side of the road. No, just leave it in Luton instead. How about that? For months. How much did this car cost? Less than the 10 grand your wheels would have cost. It's a money Give me saving my card. investment. Stop buying things. Hey. You, you said, and I quote, if we had a second car, I'd be more comfortable about making the trip. Yeah, it doesn't mean I was going to do the trip. Second car. He'll be all right. The worst thing you can do if you have a problem is sit and talk about it all day. People say you shouldn't bury your problems because if you repress them, that's bullshit. World War II, how many people died? Did everyone sit around and go, oh, we don't have time to rebuild all the cities and, and cr create the NHS. We need to sit and talk about all the bad things that's happened. Every single person has a horror story. Everyone has something bad to say. So let's somehow clone the entire population of Earth so we have enough therapists and sit there and talk all day instead of getting shit done. Bullshit. People shut up and they got shit done. There's nothing wrong with having something bad happen to you, internalizing it the best you can, maybe speaking about it with someone close to you, but in general, just shutting the f up and getting on with it. Western women are doing something that women in Eastern Europe and other places in the world don't do. In most countries in the world, if a woman's above 18, she won't be dating a guy. She could at least see the possibility of marrying in the future. They will date you if they see they might end up married to you with children. Whereas Western women just think, oh, well, he's funny, I'll just fuck him for a few months. Oh, now I have a kid, oh, I'm a single mom. They don't think ahead. They don't think, will I marry this man? Dumb shit. If you would ask the average 19-year-old American girl who she's gone out with, would you marry him? She'd be like, no. Then why is he fucking you? Like, why? For what? It's just a completely different view on relationships and the fact that they believe that them sleeping around or sleeping with a bunch of people is no different than a man doing it, which is obviously completely wrong. Everyone with a brain knows that. And it's just a messed up culture. Go from the channel. Yeah. 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 I think right, you could also it. argue that boxing is a dance, too. Uh, it's a bit different than a TikTok dance. <laughs> but, I mean, a... you are still on display, and you're, I mean... Correct. But my life is on the line, and I've seen five people die. I don't yeah. want to sit here and brag and talk about the things I've done to people. There are people who will never be the same again after they stepped in the ring with me. Ever again. I've, had, I've seen screaming wives crying over the, their, their lifeless husband. I, I, I've done things you, you wouldn't believe. When you step in that ring, it's a different level. It's not a TikTok dance. It's actually extremely disrespectful. I know you didn't mean to disrespect, but it's extremely disrespectful to even insinuate that. It's not a TikTok dance. It's life and death. It's gladiators. It's a different, it's a completely different realm. Facts. If someone told me that I could make an extra $1 million a month for 20 minutes a day of extra work, I would say no. I don't need the million dollars. I like those 20 minutes. You can get head in 20 minutes. You Correct. can chill by the pool in 20 minutes. Correct. You can do lots of things in 20 minutes. I'm not interested in extra work for, what, a million dollars? What, brokey money? Oh, what, oh, oh, Andrew, what did we eat on my birthday? KFC. Why did we eat KFC? Because when I was 21, me and Andrew used to have no food. I used to drive my broken Volkswagen Golf to the KFC restaurant in Dunstable, United Kingdom. And I used to sit in my car. And you couldn't ever eat anyone's leftover food if they ever had their mouth on it. But at KFC, they used to buy buckets. And I would sit and wait for people to sit, sit outside, eat their meal, and leave the bucket on the table. And I used to go and take that bucket, three or four pieces of chicken. And I used to collect 20, 30, 40 pieces of chicken that were perfectly fine left in the buckets. And I used to go home and I used to freeze that chicken. And me and Andrew would break it up, put it in our rice, and that was our meal. That's what sustained us for that hard year. That year we had when I was 21 and you were 22. That's how broke we were. I used to scavenge chicken from KFC because I thought, fuck it, I'm not dying and I'm not losing my kickboxing fights because I don't have enough protein. What am I going to do to make it through today? That's how broke I was. And that's a sad story if you never make it out. Who the fuck on the planet actually uses Siri? Hey Siri, can you Google the nearest gay sauna? If the person had a dog, the dog would starve to death next to the body. Uh -huh. But if the person had a cat, the cat would eat him. What the fuck? Yeah, you look after a cat its whole life, but if it gets hungry, it'll eat, where the dog won't do that. <laughs> That's cats in a nutshell. Fuck cats. Anyone who likes cats is a strange person. Whenever I see someone going, I love my cat, and they're stroking it, it gives me a serial killer vibe. <laughs> Hi, my name is... Ah! Instead, I'm 17 oh! years old. I'm very simple.
Ah, ah, you cheated, you cheated. It's bang out the machete, boom in her face, and then grip her up by the neck. Like, shut up, bitch! The second thing that I don't really like about being rich. Food used to be a big deal. So my brother and I, we've always lived together. And when we were broke and we were training for world title fights, so we were world level athletes with no money. We invented a dish that was so bland, we called it flavor because it was the only way you could add flavor to the dish. So it had the name flavor, but it was extremely bland. And it was white rice, frozen peas, because they're cheap, kidney beans. Kidney beans have more protein per 100 gram, grams than minced beef. Did you know that? I found out when I was broke, walking the aisles of the grocery store, trying to find the cheapest protein money can buy. Couldn't bring myself to be a vegetarian, so I'd add a little bit of meat, minced beef. And if I was really rich, I'd have hot sauce. But that was like two or three dollars without adding nutritional sustenance. It was just purely for taste. And I couldn't often afford that. Literally, you have no idea how broke I was when I was fighting. Kickboxing does not pay. So for a good three year period of my life, I lived on this flavor. We'd cook it twice a week, cook on a Sunday and on a Wednesday. And we'd make these big pots of rice, green uh, peas, kidney beans, and a bit of minced beef. beef. That was it. And every once in a while, if I, my friends came over and they had more money than me, or if I went to a fight show and I was getting a paid dinner, or if I was out with you know, my uncle who had money and they'd buy me a steak. Woo! You ever had a steak for the first time in three months after eating nothing but flavor? You don't understand the level of happiness. Food was amazing when I was poor. What's food now? All I do is eat steaks. I walk into the restaurant and say, give me your most expensive steak. And you know what's most annoying about that? I say that and they start talking about options. Okay, well we have the tomahawk or the ribeye. I asked for your most expensive. It's in numbers. Which number is higher? Oh, the tomahawk. Then why are you fucking talking about a ribeye? You dumb bitch. Of course I don't say it like that. I say, ha 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 ha, I'll take the tomahawk please because I'm a polite man. I'll take the most expensive steak, I don't care. I don't care what cut of beef it is, it's a cow. They cut the cow this way, they cut the cow that way. I don't give a shit. I walk in the restaurant, give me your most expensive steak. Tristan also, give me the most expensive steak. Okay, yeah, what sides do you like? All of them. Oh, all, all of them? Yeah, give, give me all the sides. We sit there with two fucking $400 steaks. We have a bite of each side, a little bit of macaroni and cheese, a bit of mashed potato, a bit of green beans, one fry, leave them basically all uneaten. And we walk off with our thousand dollar lunch and we don't even really appreciate it. And that's all we do every day. I'm at a hotel and I'm eating. I'll finish the buffet and I'll go up to the chef and say, that was amazing, very good. Who's ever complimented a buffet chef? Nobody. They stand there all day, cooking all day, making very average food. And I'll eat his average ass food and go tell him good job. And he'll, his face will light up like you would not believe. I really believe in spreading positivity as a whole. I do believe in that. I mean, I'm sure there's people who hate me. There's people who are going to listen to this podcast and go, this guy's full of shit. This guy, da, da, da. But I don't need to lie about anything I've ever done. When the bear appears, you don't sit there and argue with your chick saying, well, you went to veterinary school, so you're better with bears, so maybe you can tickle the bear. You can tickle the bear. Okay, yes, yes, you do. You're a fucking man. As a man, you have a duty to protect your female. And now people are coming along saying, no, maybe you protect her better by hiding in the bathroom and sending her downstairs with a grenade. That is fucking stupid. You have a duty as a man to protect your female. It is your duty. It is your masculine imperative. All of humanity shows it's true. All of history shows it's true. And for you to sit here and say, if someone breaks into my house, I have no duty at all to protect my woman. If she's scared and crying, I might send her ass down there because I can can't shoot shows that you have no intrinsic desire to protect or provide or look after that female which is why you have no frame in your relationship which okay. is why she okay. you okay. send her ass to the club to get fucked by okay. somebody okay <laughs> take, 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 take. Conversation. i've wasted enough of my life no 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 balls let me know but to sit here and talk to a man who thinks he can send his chick downstairs to fucking engage our <laughs> men i know i'm wasting to be my fair. <laughs> to be fair okay to okay. be fair okay. The okay. Yo. <laughs> and i watched a woman crash the she pulled out at a junction, turned, and somehow, I can't even explain to you how ridiculous this was. 
She came up, she pulled out of a junction, turned to turn right, and instead of just turning right, she did some kind of U-turn back into traffic and crashed. It didn't make any human sense. I can't, I can't explain it to you in a way that makes sense. I mean, if you're a really good friend, no, not even if you're a friend, you better, if you're my friend, you just can't be a pussy. Well, I had a heart attack, get the fuck up. And the most annoying thing about this fat cunt is that when he's DJ, he MCs. And when he MCs, all he says over and over again is, oh my God. Okay, bodybuilding is a beauty pageant where dudes try their best to put on muscle so other dudes can say, you're the best looking dude. It's gay. It's super gay. I said, tell him it's gay all the time. It's not gay, it's hard work, dedication, blah, blah, blah. Some of history's greatest and most influential men have been cigar smokers. Sir Winston Churchill, Jack Nicholson, and of course, Hannibal Smith from the A-Team. Long, cold, lonely night. She's saying, I don't care if you're a rocket scientist. I don't care if you're a businessman. I don't care how successful you are. I don't care about nothing. I need dick. Because if, if I'm kept warm, dick right on a long, cold, lonely night, any night. Basically, I'm a hoe, I need dick. That's all I'm interested in. Planet is this. They're on the radio back and forth, back and forth. And, and I heard the little one, the little hijabi one, say, oh, maybe we need a male officer. Basically saying, we can't arrest this dude. So these two little women who can't arrest me, but threatening to, can't chase anyone, but telling me I have to fucking sit still. So I said, okay. I agree. This is my public declaration. I got my phone out and start recording. I wish I still had this fucking video. This is my declaration. I agree. I will not chase the car. I'm saying now I'm free to go. I'm not a criminal. I'm free to go. I will not chase the car. And they were like, they knew I was lying. <laughs> they were like, he's going to go chase the car. Are we gamblers? Where's your mask? What do you mean mask? Mask. What do you mean mask? No, it just tastes really Let me tell you a secret, Luke. I'll kick the motherfucking fuck out of you. I know you said money isn't real, but I am getting fucked. What pisses me off most, you thick fucks. Beer break. Any man who sits there and goes, my life ain't going right, let me text some chick. He's a dumbass. He's a dumbass. How is you should, because you should go to your boys, your team. No, because boys do this weird toxic alpha. It ain't toxic it alpha. It really isn't, my dear. It really is. it no, really is. If, if a man has a serious issue in his life, he can't go to a woman. If a man goes to a woman with his issue, it's not a serious issue. I feel sad. My ex left me some dumb shit. Yeah, but right? women can give. A They're trying to kill me. I need a gun now. You don't text some chick in your phone. You text your boys because only your men who can help you. I'm in Ukraine. The Russians have invaded. I need a way out. Who's got a car? Oh, Cheyenne, Cheyenne's coming. Do to do to do, Peugeot 206. If you were my son, I would walk into your bedroom and beat the living fuck out of you. You're dead serious. Am I laughing? No. Do you know why? Why? Because this isn't a fucking game. I burst out crying to my dad. I don't know what to do. These two kids are picking on me, etc. And my dad said, But you have a weapon. Why Why are you afraid of me? You have a weapon. I said, What weapon? And he pointed and he said, Your lunchbox. Andrew, Andrew, and I've been in the daydreams. I was scared about getting on the bus on the way home. And the teacher told me off for not paying attention in class. The teacher's yelling at me because I'm worried about these fuckers. And I really, and I started to like, really feel like crying. That was at the end of school. So when I got on the bus, I was already on the edge. And when one of them started grabbing at my thing from, from behind, I turned around with the lunchbox and I smashed him clean in the face of his lunchbox. As soon as I hit him, I turned and I ran off the bus. When I went in the door, my dad was sitting, my dad was a professional chessboard. So he was sitting there at the chessboard. And he turns around and he sees my smashed lunchbox. And he kind of smiled and he said, get in the car. And we went to Walmart and he said, do you want the same one or another one? And I said, uh, I'll have the same one. And he gave it to me and he said, I'll buy you as many of these as you need. So he said to me, I said, thanks, Dad. Yeah. But, but I have to ask. <laughs> If 
you're so fucking stupid. It didn't cross your mind at some point that permanently sucking on this vape was gonna damage you in some way. You deserve what happens to your dumb ass. Breathe air. You don't need a vape. Have you ever seen anyone with a vape? Have you ever, have you ever sat in a room? So we go, wait, oh, let me just go. My vape's done charging. And what kind of parent lets their 16 year old vape anyway? If I had a 16 year old son, he's like, I'll go to vape. Get the fuck out of here, vape. Do some push ups. Hello. I would not see Andrew again. However, I feel like he did have a good conversation. He is a man who knows what he wants. He get, obviously gets what he wants. So you can't knock it. And he looks nice. Actually, no, I will. Do you know what? I will see him again. What would that make you? If you sit around and only do what you feel like doing, what would that make you? Pussy. Close. They have a pussy. It's a bit messy here because we've been making so much money. And I looked out the window and I thought, isn't it a beautiful day? Look at this. We're living amongst the castles, the ancient castles that humans built. Do you have any idea how much human time went into building these buildings back in the 1500s? Peasants cutting stone like you peasants work now, cutting the fucking hamburgers. Same shit. And they built all this, all this human time and effort and energy, and they preserved it beautifully. And I look out here into Prague, which is where I currently am. I'm actually in the presidential suite of the Four Seasons making millions of fucking dollars. And I think, who the fuck wants to live in America? Why wouldn't you want to live amongst the fairy tale? Like people always say on Twitter, hey man, if I make money, I'm gonna move to Miami and do what? Fuck whores, get chlamydia, go party, bro, yeah, party, yeah. What is in Miami? Compare it to this. Look at the absolute beauty of ancient civilization. And what's most amazing is you can live here and you are like 3,000% safer. No one's gonna kill you, no one's gonna rob you, no one's gonna shoot you. It costs less to live here than it does in America. <laughs> There's no tangible advantage to the USA except for the fact that you're an uncultured fuck. You're a dumbass who thinks that whores and hamburgers are worth more than the fucking ancient energies of humanity. If I get money, bro, I'll go. But I, I just don't get it. I don't understand. How can you justify living in anywhere in America when places like this exist? When I'm in America, I'm constantly worried someone's going to shoot me in the face. In Prague, you can actually conceal carry weapons. You can conceal carry weapons in Czech Republic, but guess what? No one's going to fucking shoot me in the face. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it beautiful? I get to live amongst the castles. No one's going to shoot me. There's no fucking little whore over there fucking twerking to fucking pop smoke. I, I despise Americans. Luke, block all Americans. Block all. <laughs> If you cannot control your own mind, let me make this, this point because it's extremely important. If you cannot control your own mind, then you are just a feather in the wind of life because your own mind is the only thing you can control. You can't control the weather. Right. You can't control other people. You can't even control whether your heart stops beating. You might have a heart attack tomorrow. You can't control anything besides what you think. If you cannot control your own mind, then you go through life with zero control. Zero influence. You can't control. I don't fucking. <laughs> I get a girlfriend because she's pretty. What's her birthday? Don't know. Don't care. When is it? September, right? September, yeah. Date. <laughs> 25th. I've only had eight chances to learn it. Eight years. I 25th. When you have money, people think, ah, he has money, but. He doesn't have anything else, you know, all he has is money. And I say, well, there's not much above money. You have love, right, of the people who you care about and they care about you. You have health, because nothing's worth anything if you're dying, right? There's no point in being a billionaire if you're sick. And after love and health, what can't money buy? Money is extremely important. If every man in the world walked around his house with a sword, just intrinsically, you'd be less likely to listen. You got your sword, your wife starts talking, you're like, Shut up. She's got a sword. I'm not saying you have to hurt them, but it's just something about the sword. Makes you less likely to just listen to shit. If every man on earth walked around with a sword, then when the females who have been emotionally manipulated try and manipulate the men, the men won't listen. That will make the female have more respect for the man. The frame will change. The female's mind will start to naturally align with the worldview of the male. And most of the issues of the world, when it comes to liberalism or any of this crazy shit, you can name anything, would basically go away. We can fix this. It can all be fixed. You just need to carry a sword around your house.
You know who I laugh at the most? People who get bit by sharks. I laugh and laugh. Oh, you lost your leg. Right, physically. Oh, peg leg. Fuck you. What? Why are you? Why are you in the ocean? Bro got fucking bit by a shark. Why is that like the lowest? Listen, like, listen, he just caught a, a rogue Human. elf. When someone says to me, "Oh, I lost my leg in a shark attack." You kind of deserve that. You're in the shark's house. Yes. Like, if you walk in my house, I'll take more than your leg, you pussy. I don't know you. I don't know you. Great white shark doesn't know you. He doesn't know your name. Yeah. Fuck you. You're, you went to the shark's house to go paddle boarding. Thought you were something. Lost a limb. Welcome to the real world. Mm. Me and sharks have a really good deal. It's really interesting. I never fuck with sharks in their house. And a shark's never turned up to my house ever. It's really? weird. It's crazy. <laughs> that well, is it's a... weird. You never well, had a shark turn up. Uh, never once. You're a full grown man. You're sitting there. You're watching the news. They're saying something. Whatever they're saying. It's good that you don't eat meat. Climate change. Da, 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 da. And you're sitting there with a sword. So I do. Climate change. Don't eat meat. Fuck off. Tell me what to do. You sit there without a sword. No cigar, no sword, nothing. Is that you? About the life you live? That's who you want to be as a man? When I sleep, I put the war room cameras on my TV. So if I hear any noise and I wake up, I can check the cameras, who's where. So check this, you try and break into Kate's house, right? I'm sleeping, bitches, three bitches. I wake up, oh, I hear a noise, check the cameras, I see people. I can reach for the Glock. I can get up and say, you know what? Them motherfuckers wanna fucking go. You wanna go, let's go. I swear, the day you see me walk outside, this is the watermelon sword, remember the watermelon sword? <laughs> I do remember the watermelon sword. Here it is. And I'll go watermelon on your ass. I come up naked in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> You say a lot of stuff about women like that they're your property. That's not what I said. I was talking about an OnlyFans company when that was question was asked. But I said that if a woman is going out with a man, she belongs to that man. That's his woman. So she wants to do OnlyFans. She owes him some money because she's his. Well, that's crazy. That one's crazy. If you, so you think that a man going out with a girl, that that's just your property? That one was nuts. I'm, I'm nuts now. Good. If a guy and a girl is dating and a girl does OnlyFans, she owes him a cut? She is his girl. But what does that have to do with anything? Because she's his. So that is you saying that women are y your property. It's not about being property. It's about the fact that she belongs to him. And the intimate parts of her body belong to him because they're in a relationship. And if she wants to sell those, he has a stake in those intimate parts of her body. So it's reverse. A uh, male porn star owes the woman. I don't know, because I think the women belong to the man. I think the woman. Yeah, that's inherently the where you get called sexist for. They will take a white male character that has been white and male for 60 years and change it into a black female. But they will never, never take a character that's been black and change it black. Ever. It's an attack on white people because i think white people suffer from more racism today than any, any other race and that piss that sends people crazy when i say that oh but the black people listen i'm half black i know that being a white man is going to give you more bullshit today from liberal idiots than being a black person is going to give you from the right way there's like fucking when 30 dudes in the kkk like literally 20 or 30 guys march if then there's a problem where liberals march en masse and they hate all white people so liberals are the enemy and white people are the ones who suffer from racism Deal with it. Slavery's over. It's done. Deal with it. And the worst thing about kickboxing is the big money is in tournaments, and tournaments is, is three or four fights in one night, kind of like prize fighter. So all the big money is three or four fights in one night. So the, the few times I got big paydays, let's say 100, 150,000, I had to have to win three fights in one night. And no matter how good you are, there's always a degree of luck to that, right? Because you don't, you might have the hard guy at the beginning. Or at the beginning, you it might you might be fighting, and just by coincidence, the guy throws loads of low kicks. So even though you win the fight, by the end of it, your legs and your shins are completely annihilated. Now you can't move properly, you can't walk properly. You've got two more fights to go. What's the worst thing you've seen a man wanting? One of my best girls had a guy called Paul. So Paul sent her $500. Please, can you buy some gummy bears? He got the girl to line up all the gummy bears and pretend they were him and all his friends. And she's sitting there with her <laughs> out and all the gummy bears. And she'd have to pick up one of the friends and like, mmm, he looks tasty. And then Paul would be like, please don't eat my friend. Please don't eat my friend. She'd be like, mmm, but he looks good. Please, please, please don't. And you'd see him on camera. He's like, fucking off. Please, please, please don't. Eventually, she starts chewing his friend, eating his friend. And he loved it. Please, no, please stop eating me. Please stop eating me. Until she's eating all the friends and then it's down to Paul, isn't it? He's the last guy. And he said, please don't eat me. Please, I'll do anything. Please, I'll give you more money. Please don't eat me. She's like, no, I'm going to eat you. I'm going to eat you. And after about two minutes of threatening to eat him, she chews Paul and he comes all over the place. What are your thoughts on girls who get with a guy's friend right after ending things with him?
I think that's the man's fault. Because wow. the, you're getting I dragged. Like you're at all. Yeah. That was actually about Brie. Well, yeah, that was, that was about, about me. Brie. Well, I ended things with okay. a guy, so I yep. owed him nothing, and then I yep. started dating his friend. That's the man's fault. Birds of a feather roll together, right? Any man who would snake his boy for a girl is the kind of guy who has the kind of friends who I wouldn't even associate with. So I think he deserves it. If you're rolling with those kind of people, you are that kind of person. And you're that kind of person that's going to happen to you. Me and my friends, me and my team, it could be Megan fucking Fox. Zero percent chance. Zero. So he deserves it. He deserves it because he's a bitch rolling with bitch. What's the worst way to start your morning? Breakfast. <laughs> Yeah. What like, I'm actually like with having to eat it or like just the idea of breakfast? I think that breakfast is the worst thing that's ever happened to humanity. Ever. <laughs> Why? It's it's terrible. <laughs> You're gonna wake up and just eat a bunch of food you didn't you haven't had to do any work, you haven't had to hunt for that food, kill that food, you haven't made any money, you've done nothing of conquest. Nothing conquest orientated since you've woken up and you're just gonna sit there and stuff your face. So you have to earn your meals. I think so. I think it's undeserved. I think when people wake up and the first thing they do is, is put food in their mouths, I think it's a bad mental model to approach the day with. I think you should wake up and you should stay hungry. You should stay hungry for a long time. Why not? We ain't gonna die. You can go weeks without food. You yeah. should wake up and you should stay hungry for hours and hours and hours you, until you've made some money or done something of note or been to the gym or progressed in some way. So you think I deserve some You food. deserve this. Most of you motherfuckers are lame. Most of you dudes are lame. Because there is a... No, no, but this is the truth. Women, please, if at any point I'm wrong, interrupt me, right? Okay, okay. There is a cool way and a lame way to do everything. Mm -hmm. There's a cool way to be a romantic and there is a lame way to be a romantic. There's a cool way to want to fuck and there's a lame way to want to fuck. You ever met one of them dudes who's just lame? Lay there? But, uh, yeah. Just, uh, or, but even... Uh, there's, a cool way to, there's a cool way to be horny and a lame way to be horny. Like if you're one of them <laughs> Indian dudes blowing up the inbox saying, Hey baby, show me your... <laughs> really? uh, you know what? So many women say to me, You're so... Andrew, Jeez. you know what? You're so rich, but you're smart and you're actually very intelligent. And I know you'd get really bored of a, like a robot. And I'm sitting there thinking, Bitch, I wish to God you were a robot. <laughs> You better <laughs> shut the fuck up. We talk about star signs. Oh yeah, I'm so glad. Tell me more about by Sagittarius rising. You idiot. I don't give a fuck. Give me a robot. All men want robots. That's all we want. Yeah. Four wives, robots. Inshallah. If you ever watch two women fall out, the pretty one will start telling the ugly one she's ugly for the first time ever. Up until that argument, the pretty one's like, "No, you're beautiful too, babe. We'll go out together." I can't believe he liked me and not you. That's weird. You're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. The hot one knows that's gonna cut deep. It's gonna hurt the, the ugly girl at her core. But it doesn't matter because that's how the betrayal goes. You aim for the weakest spot. You blindside him. My circle is one, and that's my brother. If Mike Tyson says, "I'm gonna show you how to throw a punch," do you sit there and go, "Well, you know what, Mike?" It's not bad. Or would you sit and go, okay, Mike Tyson, I will sit here, tell the world on this podcast that I have a school called Hustlers University mm -hmm. that teaches people how to make money online with 18 modern wealth creation methods. And there are people who still won't join. Oh, he's full of shit. And they're going to sit there and listen to all of the things we've said and go, mm, maybe he's lying. Because they are arrogant idiots. So most people are so arrogant, even if someone like me wastes their time trying to tell them how to escape slavery, they're too arrogant to even fucking listen. should run it's you hit a dude and he goes run you don't know he might get up and, and draw well, like, yeah. what are you standing around for right yeah. mm -hmm. so you're rolling around on the floor with some dude is is amateur hour and all these brazilian jiu-jitsu guys every time i say this like no bjj baby, 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 baby. you're a bunch of dorks it's useless <laughs> you could take the best bjj guy in the world put him against two normal men to have a street fight and he'd struggle yeah. He can't use what he knows because the other yeah. guy's just gonna start hitting it rich a bunch of people here are asking by the way and the answer is no is Andrew on testosterone steroids? I'm on loads of testosterone. You know what boosts testosterone by 15%? Smoking. Smoking boosts testosterone. It really does. I don't need injections. We don't take steroids Never. ever. I put my blood test on Twitter and I'll do another blood test here live and put it on. Live. We, we do not take drugs. So stop asking stupid questions. Never taken testosterone. I don't take creatine, protein shake, none of that crap. You know what I do? I smoke cigars. I drink booze. I have threesomes and I hit the gym. 
and I lift the weights like a G. That's it. That's it. There's Hard no work. secret. Hard work. That's all it is. The worst thing you can possibly do for your kids is make them grow up rich. That's the worst thing you can do. I was raised poor, I made all my own money, and I hope I spend it all before I die. And my son can fucking make it himself. Because all of life's important lessons come from being broke. The best things you can hope for as a head, for a head start as a child are good parents and no money. If you have those two things, you're gonna be all right. There's also other people who are depressed who sit there and go, I'm depressed, I don't know why. Because you're broke, because you're fat, because you're a loser. Nobody told you at any point you're supposed to be happy all of the time. You're not supposed to be happy. Happiness is on top of a mountain, and you fuckers ain't earned it. So I'm thinking of all the things that make me happy. The fact I'm my beautiful physique, like fucking Hercules. My, Lam my Lambo, my house, these bitches. Whatever I do, whatever I enjoy in the moment, uh, all had to be earned. My worst nightmare is losing my brother. We even have a policy, we don't fly alone. If the plane goes down, we both die. My brother doesn't like fast cars that much. He doesn't like car rallies. When I said I'm going to do a car rally, I'm driving for two weeks. And he goes, I have to come with you. I said, why? He goes, because no one's going to pull you out of a flaming car besides me. You gave me so I'm, literally, it's our worst nightmare to lose each other. But sooner or later, one of us is going to die. Western Europe is certainly some of the bottom countries. I mean, England and Germany are probably my two least favorite countries in the world. There's nothing there to see. There's your, it's a very unique blend of boring and dangerous. I mean, at least when I've been to dangerous places, because I've been to some crazy places. I've been to Iraq, I've been to Afghanistan. At least you were never bored. <laughs> you know, you might get shot or something, but these countries managed to combine absolute boredom with, with danger. So they're definitely not worth visiting at all. Nerds. Twitter is the platform of nerds. There's something going around Twitter right now. Everyone's talking about generational wealth. These nerds with their little e-commerce platform. Generational wealth, I can't, I'm gonna do it for my kids. The worst thing you can possibly do for your kids is make them grow up rich. That's the worst thing you can do. I was raised poor, I made all my own money, and I hope I spend it all before I die. My son can fucking make it himself. All of life's important lessons come from being broke. The best things you can hope for at Head Start as a child are good parents and no money. If you have those two things, you're gonna be all right. If you're born rich, you have no appreciation for anything, no appreciation for hard work, and you're always gonna to be, to, one, to some level, a dickhead. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna say this right here, right now, because there's a whole bunch of famous people, the Lincoln Park and whatever, whatever, they killed themselves. If you have children and you kill yourself, you're not a man. I don't care what you're feeling. I don't care how sad you are. You have children mm -hmm. to take care of. You're gonna embarrass your children. You're gonna leave your children without a father. Andrew, can we say that you're one more sad? time? Because you're sad. If you have children and you kill yourself, you were never a man to begin with. Mm. Absolute garbage. Fact. Garbage. And, and the only reason this crap happens is because of the acceptance of depression. People say that depression is stigmatized. It's the complete opposite. It's accepted now to the point where it's almost promoted. Cats, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you. Liking a cat is essentially cuckery. Cuckery is, I give a fuck about them and they don't give a fuck about me back. Oh, I really love my wife, I love her so much. Well, she fucks other people and she doesn't care if I live or die, but I really love my wife. That is the same relationship you have with a cat. A cat is not interested in you whether you live or die. A cat doesn't care. A cat's just gonna fucking go out and find something else to eat out the window. Like, Teddy, okay, this is your cat, Teddy. How come I haven't seen him before? Oh, most of the time he's out. Then what's the fucking point in having him? Let him fucking here. He only turns up when he wants food, and he tried to stroke it and it hissed at you. He was a fucking horrible cunt. Oh, he lets me stroke him sometimes. Oh, sometimes. So sometimes you can stroke him, sometimes you can't. Let me tell you something, cat. Let me tell you something, Teddy. You live in my fucking house and I'm buying you cat food and my whole fucking house stinks of cat shit because of your cat litter bullshit and you want to tell me I can't stroke you when I want. You're going to be out of the fucking house forever. I'm not a fucking cuck. That's why I don't have a cat. Cucks have cats. Because if I had a cat, it'd have to fucking behave. Wouldn't be trying to give me no fucking attitude because I ain't some little bitch who's going to sit there and love it. Oh, my cat likes to let me stroke it sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't, but it's okay. I'm just going to go buy my cat a treat. I'm not a fucking dork. That's why I have dogs. Like a man. Fuck cat. There's nowhere else to sleep. I can't just sleep outside. This is not human. This is not fit for a human. You're not a human. So you slept on the floor all night. Why didn't you sleep in the bed? You're sitting 
sitting here telling me you're upset that you're broke and you're going to spend time. And everybody knows the age old adage. Time is what? Money. Money. That's right. Time is money. The last thing you should be doing with your time is cooking. I can't think of a lower ROI activity than walking to the fridge. I'm going to start cooking. Fridge, ooh, onion, and some lettuce. Now, get a knife, get my knife, cut my onion, start to cut my onion. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Mm. When I save up enough money, I really hope I can go to Australia and hang around a bunch of fours with ugly, annoying accents. Wanna go to the beach, mate? No, you're a four. No, I don't, no, sorry, yes! Please, let's go to Bondi Beach, four. Let's go! I love your, Woo! I love your broad shoulders. Yeah, I love broad shoulders on a chick. One, two, three, four, five, come on, let's go five. Five, come on, five. Imagine being a quitter. Imagine being that guy, like you join something, you can see it works, you can see it's good, you see other people having success, other people making money, and then you go, uh, this is hard and quitting. Imagine being a quitter, I've never been a quitter. I don't understand these people. Every single time someone leaves HU, someone unsubscribes, they end up begging to come back within a month because they realize outside of Hustle's University, there's no light in a dark world. There's nowhere else we're gonna be able to sit and talk about money with people who are actually making money. All you're gonna do is just stay inside the matrix and be a peon and a fucking slave. I know a lot of people with a lot of money that they were born with, and when you're born with it, you never really suffer. You've never been hungry. You've never hustled, struggled. You always call daddy. Trauma is absolutely necessary in the development of a man. We need trauma. A masculine is the worst life a man could possibly live is one without suffering. Lottery will ruin any institution. You can have a business, you can be making money, everything's fine. Introduce one hoe into the office. She fucks one dude, fucks another dude, dude gets jealous. Now you got sexual assault charge. Boom, boom, boom. You involve one hoe. It's fucked. I always park in disabled bays. I'm not a bad person, but I'm a quick person. Most people are slow and stupid. I'm fast. There was no per people in wheelchairs trying to use this space in those 45 seconds it took me to buy this. So no, no one loses. But last time I uh, took one of these spaces, someone goes, excuse me, are you disabled? And I reply, I am actually. <laughs> Genuinely, right now, nothing is stopping me from becoming Batman. When you put your headphones in and you're walking down the street, listening to your music, you are a fucking target. Any of you watching this video, if you were in the same situation I was in, would be dead. I say with 1000% confidence, I don't know any other motherfucker alive who could have done what I did yesterday. I'll Let me explain something to you. Do you know whose fault it is that Taliban has reconquered Afghanistan? It's the fault of hoes. I always park in disabled bays. I'm not a bad person, but I'm a quick person. Most people are slow and stupid. I'm fast. But the worst thing about having female friends is girls can't fight. I say this, people laugh. They're like, oh, what the fuck do you mean girls can't fight? Your boys, your friends are your soldiers. You're out here on the mean streets. There's been 1,200 stabbings in London so far this year. Fucking you go anywhere around the world, there's people out to get you. There are people out to kill you. And you're rolling with some chick? What the fuck is that? If I'm rolling with my girlfriend and shit goes down, it's my job to protect her. So fine. But if I'm rolling and she's just my friend, well it's not really my job to protect her. She ain't sucking dick. Well, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get punched in the face and she won't even suck dick. No thank you. So she ain't sucking dick. So that puts me, I see us as equal. We're friends, we're equal. So we're about to get jumped by these 10 guys, Lucy. What kind of combat moves do you know? How much can you bench press, bitch? Cause we're about to fucking fight. Women are not combat ready. So if you're running through the world with a bunch of chicks, what are you gonna do when shit goes down? Now, if you're sitting out here going, well, I don't actually get jumped because I'm a, if you don't get jumped, you're probably living a boring ass life. 
If you live like me and you rock up in countries in a Lambo, go to the club, spend 20 grand on champagne, walk out with some fucking 10 out of 10, fuck the bitch silly. If you're doing the shit I'm doing, you get re resentful dudes come for you. If you're living a life worth living and you're getting paid and laid, sooner or later you're going to get jumped. Now, if you think it's cool to have your best friend as some chick, you're going to regret that shit when you eat a left hook and she's running away. Forrest Gump is the story of a man who falls in love with some bitch who runs off to be a hoe. And then once he's a shrimp billionaire, she comes back as a single mom with AIDS and he fucks her and gets AIDS. That's the end. This is the, un this is the unspoken ending of Forrest Gump. That bitch dies. And it's him and it's son at the end of the bus. Oh, well, I'm going to put you on the bus, son. It's supposed to be a happy ending. Anyone with a brain is actually sitting there thinking, no, now Forrest is going to die. Now he has AIDS. And that's going to be an orphan kid. What a sad story. A guy who goes and gives $50 to a homeless guy. And they record the whole thing on GoPros, fucking five different angles of camera. And then he walks away and goes, it just feels so good to give, you know, sometimes you got to give. And then it's shared like fucking 18 million times. He just bought 18 million likes or 18 million views for 50 bucks. That's pretty fucking cheap. That's not charity. That's exploitation. Ready to be I'm going to send you. There are a few sayings. When I say a few, I mean a lot. There are a lot of sayings which bother me. They grate on me and they piss me off. But the one that's probably up there that annoys me the most is she said yes. I fucking hate when men say that. Oh my God, she said yes. Why are you with a bitch that would say no? Why are you with a woman paying for her dinner, sleeping next to her every night, not fucking all these hoes, not cheating, behaving yourself, coming home, not hanging out with the boys. You're doing all this shit for that bitch. And you're not a thousand percent sure she would say yes. And you're sitting there going, I hope, I hope she says yes. And then if she does, you're happy. Let me tell you something. There ain't a bitch alive. There ain't a bitch I fucked in the last 10 years who wouldn't say yes to me after getting fucked once. Fuck the relationship. I can sleep with any bitch out here one solitary time and say, we're going to get married. And you know what she's going to say? Okay. Yes. Of course she'll say yes. Why are you fuckers surprised? If a man is surprised or doubtful she might say yes or elated that he is lucky enough that she said yes to taking half of his stuff when they break up, then he is a pussy. I will never get married anyway because I don't see why a government needs any involvement in my dick. They already have an involvement in my bank and my cars and my house and everything I do. Now I can't put my dick where I want without you fucking giving me some fucking headache. So I don't want to get married anyway because I want to sling this dick left, right, and so I'm going to do it. I'm not going to sit there and go, ah, if I put my dick in that bitch, then this bitch is going to go to the government and they're going to take half my stuff. No, thank you. I'm not stupid. Government needs to stay away from my equipment. But if you are going to get married, you should not for half a second be doubting. Oh, she said yes. Oh, I can't believe she said yes. Ah, I just want to slap these motherfuckers. You're fucking stupid. If you're walking down the street with this bitch and someone tries to rape her, you're going to punch the dude and you're going to risk your life trying to protect her. And you don't know if she's going to say yes to taking half your stuff. Pussy. You're a pussy. You're a pussy. I will solemnly swear. I will solemnly swear before the Lord God that there isn't a woman alive I put my penis in who wouldn't say yes to me. And I'm not sitting there sitting going, I wonder if she'll say yes. And if she did say yes, I certainly wouldn't be happy about it. I'd be fucking distraught because I got more work to do out here on the streets. Bitches waiting for me to mix it up in a pot than me fucking sitting at home with some hoe. I said yes, so, so now I'm your wife, so why are you out so late? I know what you brokies are thinking. Why would you spend 15,000 pounds on a plane ticket to go one way in one direction just to have a shout? Well, I'll break your world because I didn't know there was a fucking shower and I still bought it. Pitbull ate it. <laughs> so, uh. Oh, my God. Yeah, your cat's in mush. Oh, my up. God. In the bin. And then the neighbor, that bitch was walking around going, oh, kitty, kitty, kitty. I was like, your life is over. Your arrogance, you have paid. <laughs> Wait, then, is, is she was 16? 
Yeah, she's like, oh, my cat, if you kitty, 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 pay for your pet bull. Once the pit bull gets it, he like he he goes back and forth so fast, ripped its head off. This is going live on the internet, so I hope my neighbor, right? yeah, hope she ain't, I hope she ain't watching because she was looking for a cat the other day and goodbye, kitten. My pit bull ate it. So, uh, <laughs> oh God, yeah. you're talking. I put I, I put a sign up. I put a sign up on my wall. My pit bull ate it. So, uh, oh God, yeah, you're I've got a really big house with a really big like compound. I got armed guards outside, full mafioso, right? And I, I got like 10 dudes strapped at the gate, blah blah blah. And oh I put a God. sign up, I put a sign up, cats in the bin, in the trash, goodbye, kitten. And oh I put a God. sign up, cats don't come inside the trash. <laughs> so, uh, oh God, but cats are such arrogant little fuckers, they must have right. read the sign, don't come inside. And thought, fuck this guy. Come inside. Goodbye, kitten. Because cats think they're something, right? Either right. they're too stupid. To, either they're, listen, there's one of two scenarios. They're either too stupid to read or they're arrogant and ignored me. Either way, they deserve what's coming to them. Oh, God. For sure. So I, I thought cats were fast, but it turns out my pit bull ate it. <laughs> so, uh, oh, God. Pit, Your pit bulls are faster. I, I, I can't believe a pit bull caught the cat, but he caught it, ripped it to shreds in the trash. So, uh, oh God, oh, kitty, 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 goodbye, kitten. Me and you run an international kidnapping and human trafficking ring. Good one, because I love this. Because everyone who dislikes us and hates us inter instantly jumps to. They're sex traffickers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's why we're that's why we're on a podcast and like completely free in our house. Is house arrest? I mean, what is this? <laughs> yeah, that's why right. we're free to yeah, travel yeah, the yeah, world. Right? Can I talk a little bit about about the origins of this story? So it's so fucking lame that I'm gonna tell you all right now. A girl had been at a party at my house and her boyfriend who saw her Instagram stories said, oh my God, you're at the Tate brothers house in Romania. This was some American chick. And she went, uh, uh, no, I, I didn't want to come to this party. They, they made me come here and I'm not allowed to leave. She said that to her boyfriend. That's some bullshit excuse. So her boyfriend is obviously one of these believe all females. Oh my God, my girlfriend's not a hoe kind of guys. She was a hoe. Okay. He calls the fucking police and says, my girlfriend's being held against her will by the Tate brothers. The police call the American embassy and the next day, the police come to our house. Fully loaded, the American embassy send the cops to our house. Now, they take us to the police station. So all the pictures of me and Andrew being taken away by the police, those are real photos. And what happens is they search our house. They find no drugs, they find no women, they find no people, they find nobody. There's nothing illegal in the house. So we're sitting there at the police station, the prosecutor says, yes, we searched your house. I'm like, oh, good, what'd you find? Well, nothing. But the, the, the report said that you were holding people hostage. I said, bro, there was no one at my house. He goes, yes, I know. Well, we checked the CCTV. I said, well, what did you find? The girl who made the complaints was outside the gates taking pizza delivery and coming back inside. Ha ha ha. So I'm sitting there laughing. The police are laughing. The prosecutor is laughing. And then I went home.